How many remember FUBU? In the late 90s to early 2000s, FUBU was one of the most popular street brands in the world. It was created in the days before streetwear was really even a thing. And in a matter of speaking, it could be looked at as the grandfather of streetwear, or at least one of them. We all know FUBU as a relic of the past today, but how exactly did they fall off? Let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the rise and fall of FUBU. But before we get started, don't forget to smash the like button for me. Liking and sharing the video is the best way to help us to continue to grow. We've been getting way more views and way more subs and I can't thank you guys enough for the support. But with that being said, let's get into it. Many of us today know Damon John from the show Shark Tank. And many of my younger viewers may be unaware that before that, he was the creator of a revolutionary brand. Damon was raised in Hollis, Queens, and prior to launching his own line, he still looked to fashion as a means to make money. Initially, it was through printed t-shirts. He printed up some shirts when the whole Rodney King riot things were going on in Los Angeles, with lines like, what happened to poor Rodney King? And then Mike Tyson got locked up, and he did free Mike Tyson shirts. He would sell them at events and on street corners, and it showed him something about the reason people buy clothes. That when there is an emotional slogan or an emotional connection, products sell quicker. On a cold day back in 1989, a then 20-year-old Damon hit the streets of Queens with his first batch of handmade tie-top wool beanies. By the end of the day, he had sold out of all of the hats and turned the $800 profit. He knew he was onto something although he didn't exactly have the money to immediately capitalize on the momentum that he discovered. He decided to brand his products with the now famous moniker, FUBU. And during his off hours, John would hit music video sets and try to coax rappers to wear FUBU apparel in the shoot. This turned out to be a good idea that would ultimately pay off as millions of fans saw their favorite stars wearing FUBU clothing. First, it started out with Brand Nubian in one of their videos. Then Old Dirty Bastards wore it in a Mariah Carey video shoot. Then Busta Rhymes wore it on one of his videos. And LL Cool J decided to wear FUBU in the Hey Lover video shoot. LL Cool J actually would turn out to be the biggest billboard that FUBU could ever have at that time though. He was the one who originally brought my attention to the brand. Because back in the day, every time you saw LL, he was wearing FUBU. Mainly the hat, because he wanted to cover his head back then for some reason. In legendary guerrilla marketing move, they were able to slip one of their pieces into a Gap commercial giving them free national advertisement. LL turned up in the ad wearing a pair of Gap jeans, a Gap shirt, but what did he have on his head? His favorite FB fitted. And not only was he wearing the hat though, but during his 30 second freestyle, he looks directly into the camera and says, for us, by us, on the low, end quote. <laughs> no one at Gap, nor any of their ad execs, were the wiser, which is hilarious. It wasn't until a month later that the Gap finally keyed into the joke. And they got so pissed that they pulled a commercial and fired a gang of people after having spent $30 million running the campaign. After an appearance at a trade show in Vegas, he and his partners, J. Alexander Martin, Carl Brown, and Keith Perrin had managed to sell $400,000 worth of clothes. The only problem is, they now had to produce it all. So Damon went out looking for loans. He was turned down 27 times by 27 different banks, and he thought that he was out of options when his mom came through for him. She wound up taking out a second mortgage on her home to support her son's dream. The group of friends and business partners moved into a house in Queens together and they would double it as a makeshift factory. The hard work did wind up paying off though as FUBU blew up. And between rapper endorsement and the feel that FUBU was a brand created by the culture in a time where fashion was making a transition. Because prior to FUBU, much of street fashion was made up of mainstream brands like Polo, Tommy Hilfiger, and other labels that could be found in stores like Dillard's. Many of those brands had neglected the street market at best and flat out rejected it at worst. So to have a brand that not only embraced street, but was born in it 
was huge at the time. And by 1998, FUBU's reached its peak with sales of over $350 million. John and his partners had used hip hop culture and stars like LL Cool J, a fellow Queens native, to put FUBU's clothing in seemingly every rap video at the time. Having such a large footprint in the rap game, it seemed only natural for FUBU to decide to drop a rap album, right? So they released the compilation album, The Good Life, on September 25th of 2001 which featured the likes of LL Cool J, because of course, Nate Dogg and Keith Murray. It wouldn't go too well for them though, as the company lost an estimated $5 million. But this wouldn't be the only problem the brand would experience in the new millennium. In the early days, the guys at FUBU had problems producing enough product to fill their first big order. Now, they had so much product on the market that it was becoming a new problem. FUBU had got so big that they were everywhere. Any store that sold street fashion had some of the stuff there. And it got to the point to where they were oversaturating the market. There was so much stock in so many places that it was only a matter of time before some of it wound up in discount stores. And this would severely hurt the brand's respectability. Not to mention that they had opened the doors for other brands created from the street to enter the game. And now these brands were competition for FUBU, which was rapidly becoming the old head on the block. Call it a side effect of success, I guess. Proliferation was something that I'm sure they ultimately wanted in the beginning, even though they didn't know that it would get to this point and cause this many problems. Also, I'm sure that it was a goal of theirs to pave the way and open doors for other creatives to break their way into a game that had previously shunned them as well. But now these newcomers were competition. By 2003, FUBU had left the US market completely, except for its footwear division, of course, and built business in Europe and Asia. Additionally, they acquired up and coming brands, Heatherette, Drunk Monkey, Capo USA, Kuji, and Crown Holder, some of which I'm definitely gonna have to do videos on later. But as for FUBU, their time in the sun had come and gone. They had accomplished a lot in a short period though. They helped usher in a new genre of fashion that catered to a demographic that had previously been turned away by the fashion industry. They showed the world that street fashion was something to be respected and they paved the way for what we know today as streetwear. But FUBU didn't just go off and die though. They did go dormant for a number of years but in 2006, Damon announced that he was working on a comeback. It would take them a few years to do it, but slowly you began to see him pop up in certain stores again. And about a year ago, they announced that they would be changing up the process a bit and releasing in a more limited way. Now, whether or not FUBU can make a comeback to the heights of where they were in the past, and let's be honest, that's probably not gonna happen, but it's ultimately not important. Because the legacy that FUBU set created a whole new lane, giving opportunities to people who wouldn't have gotten one in fashion before. And for that, they gotta get a spot in the Hall of Fame. But what do you think? Will you be picking up any of the new release stuff? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know. Also, if you made it this far, then that obviously means you liked the video. And if you did, then don't forget to hit the like button for us. Liking and sharing the videos helps us to continue to grow as a channel and the YouTube algorithms to spread us to more people. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new video like this one, then hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. This way you will be dinged each time a new episode drops. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out. Until next time, peace.